Right, so for our first day of class, the first network that we're going to talk about is Twitter. So day one will be Twitter. Can you tell me what do you all know about Twitter? Anything about Twitter? 140 characters per message, also known as a post or a tweet. That's one of the big defining characteristics of Twitter. You have a short amount of space to get across your point. 140 characters, not words, but characters, which include letters, letters, upper or lower case, numbers, and symbols, and spaces. So even the spaces count. So in 140 words, you, that's like a sentence and a half or so. And you may think, that's not enough space for me to get across that I've got a sale this weekend. Well, they do give us some leeway. A tweet can include text, pictures, up to four of them, videos, sounds, links, and other things, uh, other fun things like polls and animations. So we can attach various things to the, uh, to the tweet. It's not limited to just text. So you can get more of your message across as a picture. You can put the text and the picture you can have an animation or text. You can't have, however, a video and a picture or some... there's some limitations here and there, but you, you have the ability to um, add this to various multimedia. So tweets can include multimedia. Tweets can be directed to your followers. We'll talk about followers in a moment. Tweets can be directed to your followers. Basically the public. Tweets can be directed to specific people on Twitter. Tweets can be private. So tweets, posts, messages can be directed in different ways. Question? If you guys want to use our password on the internet, it should be CE Spring 2017. If that one doesn't work yet, I believe you can use CE Fall 2016. And the Wi Fi is NCC Wireless. So if you'd like to use your own laptops or tablets and such, here's our Wi-Fi password. It's one of those two. I haven't checked if it's either 26 or 17 is working? Okay. So CE Spring 2017. So uh, our tweets, our posts, our content that we share can be pretty robust. It's not just text. We can then use Twitter on a desktop computer or laptop, on a tablet or on a smartphone. So you can have Twitter wherever you're at. If you've got a device, uh, you can get the app. Windows, uh, phone, Android phone, iPhone, you can get the uh, the app for any device or tablet. You can use it on a desktop, laptop, on any device. And the point for me saying that is that as you learn the concepts of Twitter, one of the things you want to learn that I'll reiterate is that you want to be active on a regular basis. If you get really excited about Twitter in this class and you use it for a whole week and then you forget about it for a month or two, it's not as valuable as it could have been for you. You have to be active. So there's no excuse to not to be active on Twitter if you've got a smartphone or tablet or computer. 
there's always a way to use it. With Twitter, you can have multiple managers, meaning I have a business. I usually use the fictional business Victor's Bakery. And in there, the purpose of Victor's Bakery is to sell baked goods. I want to use Twitter and all the networks to sell baked goods. So I'm going to think about using Twitter from, for that fictional business. Well, I'm busy running the business, and now I've got to start tweeting. Well, I could get help by the other uh, employees in my company. Different people could use the, the company Twitter account to post a picture, to post a sale, to answer a question. So I can have multiple managers, different people logging into the one account to manage it. Different users with a login, with their own login, their own password. to manage the company Twitter account. That's very valuable. I want other people to help me out, other people in the company to also tweet, also use Twitter. That's a whole bit, a bunch of nuances that I'll mention later, but if more people can use the account, then it won't lie fallow. We'll see how to set that up later. Twitter has a full name and a username. Most networks have this as well. Full name, username. In a moment, I'm going to go through the process of creating an account. And again, I recommend you create an account along with me or use one that already exists. That's fine. But when you create an account, it'll ask you for your full name, and people get confused, and they think, okay, I'll put, I'll put my name onto it. Not really, that's still your business name. Your business name. Your business's name. I'm Victor's Bakery. So the full name of my Twitter account would be Victor's Bakery. The username, your unique Twitter address. Your business name. Not unique. Most networks are like this, that there's a full name and a username. The full name is not unique. I can go in and, and create a brand new Twitter account uh, called John Smith. And most likely a John Smith has already created a Twitter account. If I use the full name John Smith, it'll it'll let me create a new username on Twitter called John Smith. I'm sorry, a new full name. A new full name. It's not unique. There's many John Smiths on Twitter. But the username is what's unique. There are only one account, one person, one entity in the world can have that name. So I may have Victor's Bakery as the full name. And then I've got Victor's Bakery as the username. And we'll see the nuances when we do it. But the username, what's the difference? No spaces, no capitals, no special characters. And that's the same when we get to Pinterest. That's the same when we get to Facebook on all the networks, Google+. Plus. There's going to be some full name that also usually is longer. You can write, let's say, 20 characters, 40 characters or something. And then the username is often smaller, only about 15 characters, 20 or something. Depends on the network. But this is the one also that's unique. There can only be one Victor's Bakery in the whole world. Now there can be 40 Victor's Bakeries. And that's just the way it's set up. So the problem here then is, I'm Victor's Bakery and I want to claim my name. Let's say we've had this family business for 20 years and we just got the great idea this year to get on Twitter. Well, Twitter's been around a decade. Twitter's been around 10 years. So usernames are unique. 
and if someone already took it, they took it. You can't take it back from them if they're using it legitimately. And they claimed the name a year ago. And I've had this family business for 20 years. That doesn't really mean much. They got the name, they use the name, they can keep it. Unfortunately, also, if a person creates a name and they never use it for five years, Twitter has a really bad um, flaw, and all the networks do, that they don't really release the names back into the wild. Uh, very annoying. Even for people that, you know, I'm going to really use Victor's Bakery. I want it. It's my family business. I want it. Some kid in Idaho created it a year ago and hasn't used it. Um, there's not much I can do. Not much Twitter can do. So then I'd have to settle perhaps Victor's Bakery SD. Um, the San Diego Victor's Bakery. Victor's Bakery 1 or something else like that. So um, unfortunately that's something that we're going to have to contend with eventually. This full name, no problem. The username is unique. Only one can have it in the world. Yes? How will we know this? Will the system know that there's a name already taken? Yes, as soon as we try to claim the name that we want, it'll tell us that name's taken. The limitation also with this length. There's one of our clients who is a, uh, a jeweler. She makes some really cool jewelry. Uh, the full name of her business is Elsa Valencia Designs. That does not fit on the Twitter name. We have to go with EV Designs. That did fit. Elsa Valencia Designs did not fit in our space. So we have to use a shorter name. Uh, at least, however, if you're trying to get found, both names should lead you to the right place. If someone searches on Twitter, Pictures Bakery, instead of V Bakery SD, they should still find you. If you have to settle for a name that isn't as descriptive as you want it for your username, your full name should still help you get found. Twitter has followers and following. Followers are the audience that pays attention to you. Following is who you pay attention to. In the real world, I could say right now, I have 32 followers. All of you that are in the class right now are paying attention to me, listening to me, following what I'm doing, your followers in Twitter speak. And then if I were then to want to pay attention to what you're doing, what you're talking about, I would become a follower of you. So followers are who have chosen basically to subscribe to you subscribers that's not really the right term but it's an, an, an it's an analog subscribers of your Twitter account when you tweet something new they'll see it when you put out a new sale they'll see it when you share a video they'll see it they've chosen to follow you to pay attention to you when you follow an account when you follow you'll see their content, their tweet, tweets. So if I choose to follow 20 accounts, I am choosing to see their tweets. That's the, 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 the dynamic of most social networks, followers following. There may be slight variations in the name of that, you might have over on YouTube, they do call them subscribers. Um, on uh, Facebook, it's a like. They've liked my page. So the basic concept is followers and following. As a business, we're constantly trying to grow our followers. We're trying to get more followers all the time. We'll talk about why and how, of course, in great detail, do's and don'ts. But the short answer is that 
for any of these social networks. The purpose of any of these social networks is to get followers. Why might, why might that be important to always get followers? Well, if I'm saying here that they're paying attention to you, that means a captive audience. Social media is just the new generation of marketing, of advertising. Advertising in the real world is a billboard on the street, an ad on TV, uh, an ad on, in the paper, on radio, a person flipping that sign around on the corner. All of that is advertising in the real world. In real life, IRL, uh, advertising is used to gain, to create awareness, ultimately sales. Again, if you're not selling something, if you're a nonprofit, all of this applies, just the terminology is slightly different. If I'm a nonprofit, I'm trying to solicit donations. That's my ultimate goal. So I'm using social media to solicit donations. In real life, I would give out flyers at an event. Here's our nonprofit organization, please donate. So whatever you're trying to do online or in the real world. In the real world, these advertisements, radio ads, TV ads, the person flipping that sign on the corner, all of that is to uh, get a result. The big problem with advertising in the real world is that it can be tuned out very easily. I've got that ad of mine that I paid $1,000 a month. I don't know the prices, but let's say $1,000 a month to have my ad on that billboard on the 5. Everyone drives on the 5, and there's a lot of traffic on the 5, and people can see my ad but eventually I'll tune it out and I don't actually need a plumber. So I've still spent $1,000 to perhaps reach 10,000 people on the five and ultimately I get hired by 20 people. Was it worth it? Yes, no, maybe, probably. $1,000 to make 20 sales? Maybe, probably, I don't know. But the alternative then, the new generation of advertising, tweeting, posting on Facebook, putting videos on YouTube, advertising 2.0, social media. So, um, in the real world, we have advertising. We've always had advertising, but it costs money. It's a physical thing. In the digital world, it is free. A tweet is free. Facebook is free. YouTube is free. And we can reach an audience if we engage in building followers. Because the same thing here, I said above, I can make a tweet that's public. Everyone can see it. Therefore, no one sees it unless they're a follower. There's, you know, millions of Twitter accounts. There's over 300, uh, 300, 330 million accounts on Twitter. If I want to reach the right audience, I need to build the followers, the ones that care most about my business. So building followers builds a captive audience of who would care about your business. I want to reach people that like baked goods and cookies. I want to reach people that like snacks and uh, you know, snicker, <laughs> snickerdoodles and strudel and all that tasty stuff and pan dulce and everything. I want to reach people that have a sweet tooth. Well, by putting those billboards out there, I may reach people, but probably not as many as I would have liked. So if instead I'm building these followers that really care about sweets and have a sweet tooth, those people would most... Uh, be apt to then complete the goal of buying the cookie, visiting the store, calling me or hiring me, whatever I'm trying to do online. We use social media to reach our ultimate goal. You have to define what your ultimate goal is. Examples are sell a house, fix a leaky faucet, uh, sell or um, get booked 
for catering. You see what I'm getting at? What is the goal of your business? What are you trying to accomplish in your business? How are you using social media to accomplish that? Get donations. Have people read my fascinating political opinions. Whatever the goal is of your business, your website, your online entity, whatever it is, social media. The more we build an audience, the more then we have people that are more interested. Unfortunately, 100% of your followers are not 100% sales. Again, just for expediency, I'm using the keyword sales and product and business. But if I've got 20 followers, that doesn't mean I'm going to make 20 sales. When I tweet saying, this Saturday, sale, 20% off, use this coupon, click this link. Unfortunately, it's very easy for someone to click follow. Suddenly, the mouse is very difficult to use to click buy. <laughs> So we can always have lots of followers, but that doesn't translate to sales. More realistically, and this is very um, positive, usually less than 10% of followers will buy. You will see starting off, usually less than 1% result. So, if we're always trying to build followers, and we know we have such small results, that's why we're trying to build followers. That ad that's on the 5, and 5,000 people see it, I make 20 sales. 20 out of 5,000 is a very small number, but those 20 sales resulted in me making, you know, $7,000. So it was worth it, but I cast a wide net. Same thing with social media. I want to get followers, 20, 200, 2,000, 20,000. I want to get as many followers as possible. Because if we're going for the most conservative estimate of 1%, 1 percent, 1 percent of 100 is how many? One. One sale out of 100 followers. Let's get a little bit more positive. 10 percent. What's 10 percent of 100? 10. 10 sales. Is 10 sales enough to sustain? So, it may be, it may not be. That's why we're trying to build as many followers as possible. And we'll talk about all the techniques to do that. The good news, at least, is that whatever we learn for Twitter, we can also apply to Facebook and Pinterest and Google Plus and YouTube to, to various, with some variation. But it's not like you're going to need to completely relearn every network with brand new techniques. So whatever you learn in one network, you should be able to apply to another network. And as a beginner, uh, that's very useful because it's a lot of work. There is the job of a social media marketer. As I said, I'm part of a business that we do this. We get hired to run social media campaigns for clients. They're busy doing their business. They've hired us to do then the social media. And I can show various charts and examples of how it works, how we succeed for the client. They've made more sales, they've gotten more exposure, etc. Some terminology here impressions, conversions, CTR. People see your content. That's an impression. People interact with your content. That's a conversion. CTR is click through rate, which is a simple equation uh, conversions divided by impressions. It will give you some percentage, which is your efficiency or success rate. So, impressions. I tweet something, 20 followers see it. Impressions are 20. 
someone clicked a like or a buy or a reply or save or something. They did some action. That was a conversion. We mentioned here, I mentioned here about the ultimate goal. We have many sub goals that we can get to, that we can accomplish first before the ultimate goal. As I said, it's very easy for someone to follow. It's a lot easier for someone to buy. So I'm going to forge a relationship and a strategy that I've got a follower. I want them engaged. I want them to know that I'm a real company. I want them to see my tweets and like and follow and comment. Ultimately, then I want to convince them buy the product. It's a big process. If you take you know, the, the full marketing classes, there's the whole sales funnel, um, impressions, uh, what is it? Impressions, uh, consideration, etc. There's a whole marketing strategy to this, which ultimately is a conversion, which is a goal, which for most of us is a sale. I'm going to make a sale. I could have a conversion goal that is people call me, and that's part of the process of making the ultimate sale. Maybe I'm a realtor, I want people to call me to see if I'm a good fit. So I found people on Twitter that are interested in buying a house. They reach out to me, they contact me. And you might know still simply talking to a person doesn't really land the sale eventually. It's still a numbers game, even in classic marketing and advertising. The more you do it, the more possibility of reaching your goal. So all of this is just marketing advertising 2.0, but in the new digital realm. We'll talk about setting, the, setting up the account, casting a net, catching the fish, and then cooking the fish, I guess. Uh, everything about uh, landing the sale and, and all of that. Questions uh, so far? Yes? Short answer, yes. Long answer, no. Because if you're active and exposed, there is the possibility that you could get hacked. But those that get hacked are often the bigger companies with more exposure because they're more profitable to get hacked. But there's always the danger, unfortunately, for any online thing nowadays. There is the danger, there is the possibility to get hacked. But for most of us, it's probably low. But there's always the possibility. Let's take a moment and then we'll take a break to either log into a Twitter account or create an account. I'm going to create an account. I recommend you do so also. You can use an existing account, but I would recommend to create one. You can then play with it, make mistakes with it, and delete it later. Question? Um, is there a way, I mean, I'm sure there is a way, but for people starting out to know how much CTR is getting? No, unfortunately, the problem with this is there's a lot of competition. I may be, I'm not the only baker, the, the, I'm not the only bakery, I'm not the only realtor in San Diego, in Imperial Beach. I have a lot of competition. So we will get all of that valuable data as we use the network. And the network, Twitter, all the networks, they give you a lot of data to show you this was your most popular tweet, this was the best time of day, here's your CTR, etc. So really we get that answer after we start to use it. Let's go to twitter.com. On the home page you'll see various events, various tweets that are happening. Everyone uses Twitter. Businesses, nonprofits, regular people, customers, this school, city of San Diego, everyone's got a Twitter account. There's over 330 million Twitter accounts, and it's global, it's multilingual, you can reach an audience all over the world. So we're going to create an account so that we have a voice here, so that we can start to build followers, so that we can start to market to get an audience. All of these social networks have the dual purposes of personal versus professional. And they're both valid. They're both valuable. They're both perfectly fine in that you've got the personal frivolous aspect and you've got the business professional aspect. But they're both valid. I want to use Twitter personally to reach 
friends and family and share funny cat pictures. Great. I want to use Twitter to reach an audience and make sales and share funny cat pictures. Fine. It all is valuable. All the networks have that ability. Yes? We need to have a personal account to get a business account? No. Twitter doesn't differentiate. You can have a personal email and create a, per a business account. We can have a business email and create a business account, vice versa. The other networks do differentiate. When we talk about Facebook and the other ones, you do have a difference between a personal and a business account. Do you have to have a personal on those others in order to establish the business? No. You can go directly and create a business account to have a business. However, when we get to it, I do recommend to still have a personal one, just not use it for personal, because then it'll let you log into many accounts. For the moment here at the top right corner, you can click Log In if you've got an account, but I'm going to go through Sign Up. I recommend you do also. So again, I'm recording this lecture. I'm uploading it later today. If you'd like access to this videos, everything that I'm doing on screen and my voice, send me an email requesting the um, Social Media Part 1 lectures, and then you can watch them. Full name, as I said, this is not your name, this is the name of your business. This is the one that is not unique. I'm going to create Victor's Bakery. One email account is necessary, or a phone number, to create an account for the first time. And then later, other people with their own emails can use, can log in to also manage the account. We'll see that later. If it's too big, it stops you, is that correct? Yes. You have to change something. You have to choose something that, that fits, something that makes sense. Email. For testing purposes, I'm going to make this up. You would want a real address because it would want to verify your email. One way that Twitter tries to prevent spam or bad accounts is attaching them to an email address or a phone number. And so I if I'm going to use this for real, I would want a real, real email address here so I can verify the account. Yes? Is there an advantage to using the phone over the email? No. Um, is this how people are communicating with me? Is through the email or through the Twitter? Account through the Twitter. The email is to verify that you're like a real person. So I'm going to put an email here. Now, these computers here. If you're wary of doing it in our open lab here, these computers have software called Deep Freeze. Anything that you do on our computers will erase as soon as I turn off the computer. And before I leave, I turn off every computer. So if you don't want to set this up uh, in a public lab and such, you're free to do it at home. Remember, you can watch the video at home and do it at home. You'll get the most out of it if you do it here together. And everything will erase once the computers restart. The computer's protected. Password, you make a password for the account. You could use an existing password that you know, but there's a deeper discussion that we might have later about security, cybersecurity. People are more and more worried about cybersecurity. One of the ways that people get hacked is that they use the same password everywhere. If I use a password for my login for Twitter, and it's the same password as my bank, and my Twitter account gets hacked, that could be a way that they could possibly get into my bank. And if I use that same password on every network, then all my networks are compromised, perhaps with the same password. So better security is to have different passwords for different networks. That's less convenient. Now I've got to remember five passwords instead of one. But in cybersecurity, we have to weigh security versus convenience. Things that are very convenient are not secure. Things that are very secure are not convenient. Very convenient is one password for my 20 accounts. Not secure. You're going to get hacked. What's very inconvenient is 20 different passwords for 20 accounts. But now I've got to remember 20 passwords. And I'm going to write them on a piece of paper and put them right on my monitor here. That's not secure either. Can you change this password label? All of these things can be changed, yes. So 
So as you type a password, it'll recommend here. You want to get that as high as possible. You want to write this down. This is a fake account. I'm going to delete it later. Doesn't quite matter. Taylor Twitter based on my recent site visits. Ripping the band-aid off, Twitter spies on you. So does Facebook, so does YouTube, so does Google, so does Yahoo, so does every website. That's the harshest way to say it. The nicest way to say it is, the websites want to show you the best thing possible so they will pay attention to your website traffic. In the form of a cookie. A cookie is a little piece of code that all websites basically leave on your computer to track you, to, to kind of help you in their parlance, meaning that I'm going to use Twitter and I want to use Twitter for my business and my business is about bakeries and baking and cookies and baked goods. So if I'm often browsing websites and looking at content regarding baked goods and cooking and all of that, Twitter will want to show me content related to that topic if I leave this turned on. If I turn it off, that doesn't really mean the network will stop tracking you, but then you won't see tweets and content about content that you care. You'll see generic content about technology or sports and other things you might not really be interested in. Again, I'm not picking on Twitter. I'm picking on them all. All websites do this nowadays, unless you're running an ad blocker or other sorts of software that we don't have time to talk about. But turning this on or off is your choice. It won't diminish Twitter. It won't take away features or whatever. But what that's doing is, based on your website visits, you will see content on Twitter that is more valuable to you. Like potential customers related to baked goods, tweets of other companies you might be interested in, etc. Click on Advanced Options at the bottom. If someone is trying to find your business on Twitter, they can search. And if they know the name of your business, they can find you. But here's a couple of other ways that people can find you. If you put in the business phone number, the phone number of the business of our office on Main Street, and if someone types that phone number in Twitter, they could find my Twitter account. That's up to you to decide if you want that. If this is your personal email, you might not want that. If this is your personal phone number, you might not want that. But if someone knows sales at victorsbakery.com, and they search on Twitter, they could find my Twitter account and follow me. Again, I'm always trying to build followers. Will it ask us later on for your email address and phone number? <coughs> well, uh, right here it's asking for my email right. or phone number. Right. So there's one place. And then another place, after we set it up in the settings, there's another place for it too. So you can decide which of these turn on or off. This is a testing account, I'm going to delete later, it doesn't matter, but for your own real business, you can figure out what works and you can ask me further in the, in the lab time. I'll click sign up. What often happens because I create a... Uh, we have everyone, I have everyone create an account here. About 20 or 30 people at the moment right now are also creating an account and this looks suspicious to Twitter why are 30 accounts suddenly being created in one room in San Diego it must be a hackers hive <laughs> so in my case it's asking me to further verify that I'm not a spammer via an email uh, via phone number you may see however a skip button I don't see it on mine and so you can uh, put in a phone number, or if it won't let you get past, skip it. Yeah, if it asks skip, go ahead and skip it. If it doesn't ask skip, we're going to take a break in a moment because, again, Twitter sees why are 30 accounts being created at once. We'll take a break, and then that might clear things up. But if you're able to do it, to skip it, you go ahead and skip it. Yes? It is saying here, would you like to store your password for Twitter.com? That's something else. That's the web browser uh, wanting to keep your password. You want to say no to it? it doesn't matter because when I turn off these computers, it'll erase everything. Does this account mean if we wanted to keep this account that we're creating? Yes. Will it stay for us? Well, 
Yeah, when you go that when you go home, it'll still be there. Make sure you wrote down your password and all of that. I'm just saying that on these computers, your login and your personal info will be erased. And can we, we can use this on our mobiles too. Right? Yes. Yes. So they say call me. Will they actually just go through to Twitter and they will actually make the phone call? Yes, that's the way that they prevent the spammers. That they will call that phone number at this moment to confirm. They'll probably have a little automated message that says type in this number, and that'll confirm. So, for some of us, we're stuck here. For some of us, we were able to proceed. I got stuck here as well. I can't show you the next screen. So what we're going to do is, uh, I'm going to pause here to take a break. If you managed to get past this screen, I would just keep going next, 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 until you get to the home screen of Twitter. If you weren't able to get past this screen, you could put in a phone number. We'll take a break in a moment to take calls, and then you can proceed. If you don't want to do any of this right now, that's fine. After the break, we'll, we'll go on, and then you can follow along and do this at home. So it's 10.45. We'll take a short break until 10.55. See if you can log in or sign up to the account, and then we'll proceed at 10.55.